The good news about new discoveries is that they can be made in many different ways. Um, sometimes scientists really have an idea in mind and they follow it through for a long time and it turns out to be correct. But more often, I would say, um, scientists have an area they are interested in and they explore what happens. And nature makes the discovery. <laughs> nature is telling us what really happens. So if we observe, nature will tell us what is new if we observe with an open mind. And so discoveries are there to be made because it's how the world is. And if we look carefully, they will come by themselves. Most discoveries are made by being alert to accidental discovery. Uh, and one way of saying that is if you're in a laboratory, you're doing something, um, you keep your eyes open and maybe nature's trying to tell you something rather than trying to tell the answer you seek. Discoveries are made first with a lot of hard work and also what I would call being deep in the rabbit hole. So we talk, and especially in the idea of energy, about multidisciplinary science. But the way I've always made discoveries is understanding something so deeply that the new discovery starts appearing in front of me. It could be very, it could be very interdisciplinary, way over there, but it's knowing something at a, at a core so well and so deeply that from that foundation, you use that as a springboard to make discoveries. They're made by a combination of asking a question that is interesting to you, and then with an open mind observing to see what is really happening, and being open to the idea that what you thought might be happening may not really be what is. And if that open-mindedness is there, and if the question is good, there'll be a discovery to be made inside there. And then where do you go from being deeply committed to one area of science and using that as a springboard foundation? It all comes down to asking the right question. If you start asking questions and you find the answers that you understand to be true, and then you continue and you persist, uh, eventually you will find that you're asking very important questions that will be ones that um, challenge the boundary of human knowledge. It will happen eventually if you just keep at it and don't become discouraged because one answer that you found people may have already known the answer for or because you hoped that there was an answer that turned out not to be the actual one. Those are not failures, those are, are really successes. And very quickly, your questions will lead you to something that is, that is important. I, I really believe that. So, you know, this is the way scientists work. You know, they do something, they get another idea, or somebody else gets another idea, even better. Uh, because if, you know, lots of people come into something that you help start, uh, I used to tell them, what, can't you just admire from afar <laughs> and let me do all the stuff? I used to joke about this for a few years, and then I realized, actually, you're having much more impact if everybody's rushing in. So, but, you know, it's, that's part of science. So when I write papers, I try to, and I teach my students to separate that the results is the only thing as a scientist I really own that's valuable. And then my analysis it's my result, but my, sometimes a scientist over there looks at my result and interprets it better than I did. So that I can live with, that's fine. It becomes doable. It becomes easy enough to do so that many other scientists can come in and do things, but once they can do it in their own laboratories, that means they can take it places you haven't thought about. And that's how science progresses. Mm -hmm. The reason you do, new, you do experiments to teach yourself. So when you're doing experiments, 
when you're in school, and a lot of the students who will be watching and listening to this, they're in school, you're learning known knowledge, knowledge that's already known. And so you're learning something that somebody else has figured out. When you're at a discovery phase, and that's what a PhD is, doctorate beyond uh, college, that's creating new knowledge. And in the creation of new knowledge, you have to take existing knowledge and manipulate it to design experiments to create new knowledge. And when you're creating new knowledge, you can think of it as a stone by stone. And there's great satisfaction for me to give a stone that I want to build on, that I'm creating knowledge. But sometimes there's more satisfaction to see another scientist take your stone and build a different building. And so that's always a really great feeling. I, I like the buildings I build out of the stones of my knowledge, but it's even nicer sometimes to look over here and say, wow, look at what they did with my stones. That is even more beautiful, and that's really always exciting. There are many examples where people have made a very fundamental discovery, but at the time, it wasn't fully appreciated. It was only as time went by that the importance of the discovery became more obvious. There are other occasions when you can just feel it. We're trying to understand how nature works. It may be useful, it may be not, uh, or it may not be useful for 50 or 100 years. If you spend time searching to understand what nature really does, uh, you will find many interesting things. Uh, so interesting, you could never have guessed them uh, before you started looking and asking nature to tell us. Um, so it is, the, it is an enormous part of how we make progress in so many ways. And keeping your mind open, if you ask a question and nature talks back to you, as one person said, when nature talks, prepare yourself to listen. <laughs>